Hello. I'm going to show you what balsam separation looks like. Now, the rear two elements of this 16mm 2.8 Nikkor are glued together. And uh, when uh, that cement comes apart, it's called balsam separation. You'll actually see here in the lens, this is underneath the rear element, but directly also touching uh, the uh, secondary element in uh, the rear element group. And you'll actually see it as a line here. Now you probably can't see the fact that it looks like a rainbow. Okay, it will always look like a rainbow. Now you see this, what looks like haze, you think, well that's oily haze. It's not. And how do you know it's not oily haze? Because uh, balsam separation, now this is, there's two aspects of balsam separation. You see the one here, it'll look like a rain, but it looked like a crack in the glass, but it's not a crack. It's balsam separation. Now you see this cloudiness in the uh, rear two elements? It's between the two, actually. Now you would think that's haze because it looks like oily haze, but it's not, and the reason you're able to differentiate the two is that if you actually look at it with the light behind it, you probably can't see it very well, but you'll actually see a rainbow as it's being transmitted through the haze. Now a haze, true haze, which is grease based, where grease is particularized due to heat that migrates to the lens, it will just look like, you know, somebody sprinkled trillions of tiny dots of cow's milk, okay? It'll just be white and hazy. But this has a rainbow with it, and you can actually partially see that with the light underneath it. Sorry, I'm not shooting with the macro lens, but you can kind of see that. So if the haze has a rainbow-like diffraction to it, um, where the light actually scatters out like that, that is also balsam separation. So balsam separation manifests itself two ways, to be, to be differentiated uh, from haze. Now, the first way it manifests, it looks like a crack in the glass, but that crack will always look like a rainbow, okay? There's one here, and there's another big one over on the other side. However, you'll notice that, let me try to get it to where you can see it. Okay, you can see it there. If I go like this, you know, this would be like sitting on your light box or your camera. So that balsam separation is not going to, the one that looks like a crack, the larger balsam. You'd think that would be the issue, but it's not. It's all these little particularized ones. Now, what will happen is, is when you take your shot, indoor, this would make no difference. See, now here it looks perfectly clear, right? You still can see the balsam separation, but that's because I have a light up here. Now, this would never, light would never be coming in from into the rear element so it would be on your camera like this you see how it disappears you see it right down here but then if I put it on the light box pretend so it vanishes so it's not an issue there but the balsam separation that looks like haze okay what that does is it, it'll be perfect for indoor shots okay now this lens looks like even though this lens is well over 30 years old it is basically 110 percent on the outside so someone uses this once or twice, and then they put it away. Um, so it looks like, it looks brands, and the front element looks 110%. It's just absolutely gorgeous, okay? So it's perfect. Except for the fact that someone's, you can see it right there. You see that crack? It looks like a crack, but it's not. And if you were able to look closer instead of through my video camera, it would look like a rainbow, okay? That's balsam separation. Now, if I were to actually mount it on my camera, which I'm pretend doing here, it'll vanish, which means it doesn't affect your photograph. But that haze, which isn't haze, is uh, balsam separation. And what it does if you're shooting outdoor, indoor is not an issue, but if you're shooting outdoors, what will happen is it'll make, if you're, like, you're shooting into the sun, or if you're shooting landscape or something, it'll make the sky or the transition between the sky, so you've got the sky up here and the trees here, it'll make it look milky. And uh, it'll actually uh, imitate haze as far as what it does. So it imitates haze even though it is not haze. Oh, by the way, these, uh, these, uh, and the current Nikors are like this too, the fish eyes. Now, you talk about filtration, obviously you have no ability to mount a filter on the front of this fish eye lens, but it uh, comes with a, a set of, uh, most people have these missing. It comes with a set of four filters. They're metal. This is a really old, nice 60mm AIS 2.8. What it does is it, it attaches via leaf spring right here. You see it pops off like that. 
there like that and then you're able to see that that now just looking at it superficially this is why it's so important to expect these uh, lenses with the flashlight is that if you're buying this out in the camera store something like oh my god this lens looks a hundred percent new it's 34 years old and it's older than that and oh it just looks awesome oh my god there's not even a scratch on it oh my god it's so beautiful and you get home and you realize oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Someone stored it in a hot spot. This, folks, is why Nikon tells you, store your lenses in a cool place! <laughs> you know what happens when you store your lenses in a hot car? Or you leave your lenses in a hot car? You screw them up! <laughs> That's right! You know what happens when you store your lenses in a hot attic? Or uh, um, even though they're... Uh, uh, sealed inside a Ziploc bag so they're not open to moisture but you leave them in a hot garage you know what that does to your lenses? SCREWS THEM UP! <laughs> yes folks heat kills lenses fungus kills lens. all sorts of stuff kills lenses but nothing will kill a lens better quicker and nastier than heat because you look at this lens and go oh my god it's so beautiful this old lens is used twice and put away yeah put away in a hot spot Damn ya! <laughs> He's crazy! Yeah, I also know what I'm talking about, too. Um, <laughs> so, what's the moral of the story, kitties? When you're buying a used lens, always have a light to shine up underneath it. Yes. <laughs> anyway, now you know what balsam separation is. Um, this lens is perfectly good for indoor. And it's also good for outdoor, as long as you're not shooting into the sun! <laughs> or, or it looks really bad on an overcast day. Um, so this lens is limited. It has gone from unlimited to limited. Unless you like really crappy photographs where it looks like a giant cow was squirting its milk up in the sky in your pictures, because uh, that's exactly what it will do. See here, it looks perfect. You can actually still, still see the balsam separation there. But once it's mounted on your camera, that doesn't matter. Also, balsam uh, separation propagates, which means that even if you take good care of it from now on, it'll get worse! Which is always good news. Um, fixing that? Oh, I, it might cost you as much as you paid for the whole lens! Which means fixing it becomes redundant! <laughs> it's like... Well, the lens cost you X hundred dollars and it'll cost you exactly that much to fix it. Then you go, uh, I think I'll just pawn it off on an idiot and buy one that isn't screwed up. Uh, good choice. Good choice. Good choice. So, <laughs> now folks, now you know what balsam separation is on an otherwise absolutely gorgeous fisheye Nikkor lens. Absolutely gorgeous. Looks like it was used two or three times and put away. Which it was. Except they put it away in the wrong place! <laughs> oh, this is what caffeine will do to you. So, folks, that's what Nikon and Canon means when they tell you don't store your lenses in hot places. Uh, catch you later. <laughs>